the topic that we're going to start today is circuit <coughs> analysis of three types of circuit the first one is going to be series the second one is parallel and the third one it doesn't have any name but uh, I like to call them as combination or combinational circuits so basically it will be combination of both series plus parallel resistors okay so let's start with the series configuration or you can say that the first step to solving any question in physics about circuit analysis would be to find the equivalent equivalent resistance of that circuit so be that <coughs> series or be that parallel we must be able to find out what the equivalent resistance would be now when we say equivalent resistance this only means that if I had to uh, remove all the resistors and replace the circuit with just one resistor what the value of what will be the value of that resistor so we're just looking for an equivalent just like we look for a resultant force or resultant vector when two or more forces are acting on an object right okay so uh, I'm going to use this symbol for resistors this is the proper CAIE symbol but for convenience I will be using this symbol for the resistor you will find this resistor symbol at higher levels for metallic uh, uh, resistors right uh, this one or this CAI symbol is more universal it actually incorporates capacitors inductors and resistors capacitor inductors we will find them capacitor you will find them in A levels inductors you will find them in uh, university or at higher education of engineering okay so this is the symbol that I will use but you will always use this symbol I'm only using this one for convenience that's it this is not a part of your course okay so uh, the resistance or the circuit that is connected in series can be identified as a series circuit by the fact that the current only has one path to flow the current has no choice the current can only flow in this way right so let's say that the resistance of the first resistor is 10 ohms the second one is 20 ohms and the third one is let's say 50 ohms so the combined resistance or the equivalent resistance of a series circuit can be found by simply adding all the resistors together so if I call this as R1 this is R2 and this is R3 the total resistance or RT would be simply equal to 10 plus 20 plus 50 leading to 80 ohms so what's the benefit of doing this so what we're looking at is now I can replace just one resistor in place of these three resistors that will equally do the same job or have an equal impact on the circuit in terms of resistance so more like you can say that we're trying to simplify the circuit by finding the equivalent resistance the target is to simplify the circuit to just one resistor in the lump form and then we can solve the circuit and then move on to more complex configurations okay so this is for CV circuit now let's look at for resistors in parallel now it's possible that the resistors in parallel are more in number let's say three resistors four resistors and so on and so forth what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you only three resistors most likely you will get only two resistors least likely is three and four but we're going to solve it for three resistors so that the pattern of resistance or at least the pattern of this can be figured out so let's say this is first resistor this is resistor number two and this is resistor number three and then the current continues in the same similar fashion okay so when the current ar arrives at this junction or at th this point where the parallel circuits actually starts this is known as a node in physics this will be known as a node as well so from the point the circuit or the circuit actually divides or the circuit becomes a parallel circuit to the point where the circuit ends being a parallel circuit those two points will be called nodes now this term is not a part of your course but you will find this at higher level so I'm introducing it right now okay so the current will enter this node and then divide 
in these three branches. And again, after crossing these resistors, combine together and then continue down its path. So for the sake of example, let's consider the values of resistances. Let's say the, R, the value of R1 is 10 ohms. This is 15 ohms and this is, let's say, 25 ohms. Now, what I want to do is I want to find a single resistor. In place of these three resistors, I want to find an equivalent resistance so that I don't have to solve for three resistors independently. I can solve for the representative, which will be an equivalent resistor. So, to, in order to find this, the formula for a parallel combination is a bit difficult in terms of mathematics. So, the formula goes something like this as 1 over RT equals to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. And if there had been a fourth resistor, this would have gone as plus 1 over R4, so on and so forth. Do we understand the pattern of adding more parallel resistors and how it's going to translate mathematically? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. All right. Now let's. Let me just keep up the values into this formula. Yeah. 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 So let's put values into this formula. Now be advised that you're going to do. Uh, generally, students do one mistake, and I will highlight that at the end. So let's put in the values. So one over ten plus one over fifteen plus one over twenty-five. Now the examiner is not checking your mathematics for this exam. Is only checking your physics for this exam so i would generally recommend my students that don't try to take the lcm at this point you can learn or you can do the lcm somewhere else you can do that in mathematics exam i would recommend using the calculator at this stage after putting in the values use the fraction button to write down all the values the same way they're represented on the screen right now and then you can simply press is equal to or an equal to sign you will find out that the value of 1 over RT is given as or will be found as 31 divided by 150 as this fraction. If you have a calculator, you can verify it with me. Now, what we were wanted to find out or what we were looking for in the first place was the value of RT. This is the mistake that the students do. Students think this is the final step because they are not writing down 1 over RT with every equation, with every step. So they forget at the end that 1 over RT is what we wanted to find out. Ba basically, we wanted to find RT, but we had to take a reciprocal at the end. And they forget about that, and they write down the incorrect answer. So since we are trying to find out RT, uh, there are two methods to visualize this. Either you can simply recip take a reciprocal on the left-hand side and take a reciprocal on the right-hand side, or you can simply apply the logic of cross-multiplication to find RT. So 150 multiplied by 1, RT multiplied by 31, and you can still find RT. So RT will be found as 150 divided by 31. And the value of that would be up to two significant figures. That is coming out as 4.8 ohms. I'm taking a pause at this point. If you are getting the same answer, please let me know. Uh, yeah. All right. So notice that in place of these three resistors, what I can do now is simply replace between these two nodes, between these two nodes, I can simply replace one resistor that has a value of 4.8 ohms. And electrically speaking, it will be representing or it will be doing the same job these three resistors were supposed to do if they had been over there individually. So again, my purpose of this topic, that equivalent resistance, is to simplify my circuit. So three resistors combine together to form one in series configuration, and again, three or more resistors combine together to form a single resistor. Again, we are trying to simplify the circuit, so the number of resistors or the number of calculations decrease in my circuit, and we still end up with the same answers. So do we understand the process of equivalent resistance in this topic about series and parallel? Yeah, so now, just, uh, if you have multiple resistors... With now, let's try a combinational circuit. Let's say there are a few resistors in series and a few resistors in parallels. Let's try that. So we have a combinational circuit. All right, so let's say that a few resistors may be in series, for example. This is my starting point of the circuit. This is resistor 1, this is resistor 2, this is resistor 3, and in parallel we have a resistor 4, joins together and then comes back to complete the circuit, like this. So this is my point A and this is my point B. What I want is, I want to find out the equivalent resistance. So in place of these four resistors that look rather complicated right now, I want to find out 
that if I just had to replace one resistor between these two terminals to lump them together or to find out the combined effect, what would be that value? So let me call this as RT or sometimes you will find it as R equivalent, right? Okay, so now let's look at the value. So this is let's say 10 ohms, this is 20 ohms, this is 15 ohms and this is let's say 30 ohms. So I know that uh, the first two resistors they are in series so I'm going to add them together directly and my first step or the simplification of simplification in the first step would be that between A and B I see that now I'm only left down to three resistors uh, in this way this is A and B this is B so the first step of simplification I've added 10 ohms and 20 ohms together because I know that they're in series why am I saying that they're in series because if I analyze the flow of current I s realize that when the current enters the 10 ohm resistor, it has to pass through it. It has no other option to bypass it. Again, exits the 10 ohm resistor and now enters the 20 ohm resistor. There is no alternate path. So exits the 20 ohm resistor again. So since there was no alternate path, I will have to say that 10 ohms and 20 ohms was, uh, they both were in series to each other. Now, when the current enters this node, again, this is node and this is also a node as we are familiar with this term from this previous example. Okay. so. When the current enters this node, it is going to divide into these two branches. It has a choice and it, it is going to divide. And again, at the second node, they're going to combine together and flow back to the circuit where they came from. So whenever the current has a choice to actually divide that point till the point it actually combines together, whatever is between that point, that should be considered as a parallel circuit. So this one is going to be 30 ohms. I've just combined the series resistors and now I have 15 and 30. So this is 15 and this is 30. I have to use for this section, I'll have to use the formula for the parallel resistor that I've learned just now. So because I want to simplify them, right? So one over RT equals to one over 15 plus one over 30. Can you find the answer at the end after taking the reciprocal? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the final answer is 10 ohms. Now again, I'm going to simplify the circuit furthermore by replacing this over here. So between my terminals A and my terminals B right now, the first simplification was of 30 ohms. The second simplification that I've done is for the parallel combination. And now in place of 15 ohms and 30 ohms, I am going to replace 10 ohms. Do we have any objections up to this point? Any problems? So I'm just uh, simplifying, yeah. okay, so I'm just simplifying their representatives by using the formula of series and parallel that we just learned so far, okay? Now again, I see that they both are in series right now, so I can again combine them together to look something like this, that this is just a single resistor that is having a value of 40 ohms between the terminals A and B, right? So I go back and I realize that the total combined resistance of this whole complicated circuit can be represented equally, electronically speaking, in a circuit with a simple single resistor that may have a value of 40 ohms. So instead of this, now I'm going to be using this to solve my circuit. This is more convenient because it's only one resistor. And if the, if the question perceives or if the question is being asked from us, we can still go back to the circuit and then find individual values that we're going to do as the last step of the circuit analysis. But do we understand how to find out the equivalent resistance of series combination, parallel combination, and a combinational circuit that may have both a part of the circuit? Do we understand that? We start the question. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to revise just one bit of the information that we already did because that will help us understand and develop logic and reason to never forget why we are developing these rules. So again, I go back to the basics. My current was number of electrons and voltage was the energy per electron, right? Or how much work done it can do, how much energy it can deliver from one point to another. So we're going to start with the characteristics of a series circuit that if it is a purely series circuit, how to solve always for voltage, current and resistance. We are trying to solve for all three quantities, right? Okay. So for example, we have a series circuit that has 
let's say three resistors like this it's it's very possible that the configuration may look like this to us it's possible and it will still be a series configuration you see i've d i've just uh, shifted that resistor that i've drawn over here on to this side so it doesn't matter as long as there is only one path it does not matter and between these two terminals i have connected one battery of certain voltage and now what I want you to find out is the voltage consumption and the current across the circuit. Now, since it's a series circuit, I have some expectations, some qualities which we will verify with calculations that is that so or not. So the first quality that we know about a series circuit is that the current remains same. Now, when we say that the current remains same, it means that the value of current that you're going to find at this point will be the same at this point and will be the same at this point. So no matter where you are or no matter wherever you connect the ammeter, the answer that you're going to get from the ammeter will be the same. And the second quality that we're looking for, the uh, looking in the series circuit for is the voltage. So what happens with voltage? Now, voltage will be divided or will be shared among the resistors based on simple idea and that comes from Ohm's law which is V equals to IR now when we say that the current remains the same it's constant so I will deal current as my constant of proportionality and I'm only going to land at the equation that is V is proportional to R do we understand up to this point that when I'm saying that this is constant then I can absorb that into the proportionality right so mm -hmm. if I and now this equation helps me predict which resistor out of this series circuit will consume the most voltage so higher the resistance of that element higher will be the voltage consumption and there is a reason for that you see higher the resistance now since voltage is the energy more energy will be consumed or more energy will be spent by the electron to move through that resistor so it's basically simply as which resistor is the is is hungry right now is more hungry than the other one so whatever one is having higher resistance it will take away more energy from that electron so if i had given you the values let's say 10 ohms and 20 ohms and let's say this is 40 ohms even without solving the question i could have predicted that the voltage of this resistor r1 voltage of resistor v2 and voltage of v3 my v3 based on the same idea in this circumstances v3 would be the greatest then it will be v2 and then it will be v1 so the highest voltage share of the battery will be from v3 will be for v3 then will be for v2 and then we will be for v1 now we're going to confirm this with calculation that whether these can of course they already did these calculations and then landed on these conclusions we are i'm sharing this at the beginning of the lesson so that when we conclude with the numerical example we can relate back to these examples uh, these rules for the circuit now these are not only observation these are basically rules for this circuit so whenever you're going to look at a series circuit i would recommend looking at it in this way that always keep these two things in mind for a series circuit that makes it easy to understand okay so let's say for the sake of example that the battery that we have for this circuit is 80 volts or simply put let's make it smaller number this is 8 volts <coughs> right so your first step as a student should be to simplify the circuit because instead of 3 I want to represent it as 1 so I represent the circuit in this way that I have the same battery and I have just one resistor now since they are all in series I can simply write them down as a single resistor directly and I can write this down as 80 ohms do we have sorry 70 ohms do we have that problem? Any issues up to this point? Uh, no, I understand. All right. Yeah. And I'm going to change the voltage to 7 as well because I want to make sure that the values are considerably easy to calculate. And the examiner would also try to make sure that the values he gives you are always going to be whole numbers, not recurring fractions. So we have 7 volts of battery or 7 volts of EMF. Now what I can do <coughs> is calculate right now using Ohm's law the current in my circuit that is produced by the battery because the battery does not know that these are three individual components the battery only observes the equivalent resistance what is the final equivalent resistance the battery has to deal with so it's not looking at them individually it's looking at them collectively or it's observing them collectively so we have v equals to ir right 
and I have the EMF or I have the voltage of the source that is 7 volts. I don't know the current. I know the resistance that is 70 ohms. So I can find out the current. Can you please find out the value? <coughs> I believe it should be 0 0.1. <coughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so the current through the battery. Now, I will use these terms frequently when I say that the current through the circuit or the current through the battery, it would mean the same thing. Why? Because we are in a series circuit and the series circuit, the current remains the same. So this 0 0.1 amperes of current is actually being generated by the battery or you can say it is being pushed by the battery in this circuit or you can say it is basically current injection into the circuit right now. Okay, so my battery of 7 volts is only good enough to inject 0 0.1 amperes of current. And if you remember from our previous lessons, we know that one coulomb of packet of electrons has approximately 6.25 into 10 to the power 18 electrons. And of course, I can convert this current into packet of electrons if I had the time for this calculation. And I can simply understand that these are the number of electrons flowing through the circuit right now. So is it possible that the number of electrons leaving the battery, they will be different at different parts of the circuit? they will be the same at different parts of the circuit. It's like a loop. So if let's say 6.25 electrons had or power 18 electrons had or were at this point, it will be the same at this point, it will be the same at this point and it consequently same at this point. This is what we mean by the first point that the current remains the same. Do we understand this point? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, okay. So the first benefit that we got from simplification was to find out the current being produced by the battery. Okay, now I'm going to go back and apply. Since I wanted to find out the vo individual voltages of all three resistors, I'll have to go back to the main circuit where the question begins from. Because I know the current through the circuit, I know that all three resistors are experiencing the current of 0.1 amperes through them. Now let's try to calculate all of these values for these resistors and see what's going to happen. So I'm going to draw the circuit again with the, the battery. So 10 ohms, my 20 ohms, and then we had the 40 ohms. So 10 ohms, 20 ohms, and 40 ohms. Now if I had connected voltmeter, now we know that voltmeter actually measures the voltage and has to be connected in parallel across three resistors if I wanted to find out the voltages. And if I wanted to find out the current, what I could have done is connected the ammeter anywhere in the circuit it will give me the same value. So if I had connected an ammeter at this point or at this point or even at this point, doesn't matter, it will give me the same answer of the value of current because it remains the same. Now I'm going to apply V equals to IR again on all three resistors or values for all three resistors. So the first one, V1, that is current multiplied by resistance. So 0 0.1 amperes current through the 10 ohms and there is 10 ohms resistance. So I get one volt then we have V2 as 0 0.1 multiplied by 20, we get 2 volts. Then we have V3 equals to 0 0.1 multiplied by 40 ohms. So V3 comes out as 4 volts. So I understand we find that the voltages are 1 volt respectively, 2 volt and 4 volts respectively. And the battery itself was 7 volts. Now. If I try to add these voltages together, I add 1 volt, 2 volt and 4 volt together to find the total battery voltage, to find the total voltage consumption. So what will be the answer? 4, 6, 5, 6, 7. So the total voltage that I found from this method is 7 volts again. Is that so? Right? Now when we go back to the second point, voltage is divided. Do we see that the battery voltage is being divided into three components? Do we see that? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. why is being it, it, it's being divided? Because voltage is the energy. So energy of the electron is being shared by all three resistors. That is why I'm emphasizing on this idea again and again that do not forget about the basics, that voltage is energy. In series, it's going to be divided because every resistor has to take its own share from the electron. And also notice the one more thing over here that uh, if I add all of them together, I still get back the battery voltage. So when I say that voltage is divided or is shared, this is what we mean by that. 
So an MCQ or a very common MCQ or a popular MCQ from the examiner is that he gives you all the values. He will miss out just one value of the voltage. For example, this 4 volt is missing. And he asks you in the MCQ what will be the value. So I know that 7 volt has to be divided in all three resistors. So out of 7, 1 is taken by 10 ohms. 1 is taken by 20 ohms. Oh sorry, 2 is taken by 20 ohms. So 3 volts are missing. So the rest of the 4 volts are going to show up for the other resistor. Even if the resistance was missing, even if the voltage was missing, we could have added and subtracted based on the same idea to find out the final voltage of the resistor. Do you understand this point? Yeah. All right. All right. Now, the other thing, the other trick that we were discussing is that I could have predicted which one will get the highest voltage. And this is the prediction that we made at the beginning. So do we see that prediction becoming true at this point? The highest share of voltage is by the highest resistor. And the smallest share is by the smallest resistor. And the other one falls between them. Can we see this uh, being implemented at this point? Do we see this yeah. happening over here right now? Yes? Yes. All right, good. So do not forget about these two rules about the series circuit. This will be a part of your course and this will help you uh, predict the final answer that what voltage or what will be the comparison between the voltages among the circuits right okay so based on this series circuit there is a concept that is known as potential potential divider now do we remember that the voltage or the second name or one of the names of the voltage is potential difference do we remember that right so can I say that since the voltage is being divided, I can say that the potential is being divided between the three resistors? Mm -hmm. Okay. So potential divider is effectively a series circuit, but with a more fancier approach, you can say, a more easier approach to find the answer. So I'm going to draw the same circuit with a different implementation, but it will remain the same. So this is my terminal A, so I have this resistor 1, resistor 2, resistor 3, and over here. The EMF that I'm providing right now is still the same, that is 7 volts. I have 10 ohms, then I have 20 ohms, and then I have 40 ohms. What I want is to find out the voltages of three components, but I'm not required to find out the current. He has not asked me about the current. So what students generally do is go through this whole process again, they simplify the circuit, find the main current, and then apply V equals to IR on all three of them. There is a shorter way of doing that. Because it is being shared, the voltage is being shared, I can simply apply a mathematical ratio, simple mathematical ratio, to find out the voltages without even finding the current. So how does the formula go about? The formula is very simple whatever resistor you want to find the voltage of let's let's take that as vx take its resistance in the numerator on the upper side of the divider divide this by the rest of the circuit the total resistance and multiply this with the emf of the battery or the voltage that you're trying to share so if i were to apply this formula for the first resistor i would have simply done 10 divided by the resistance of the total circuit so that would be 10 plus 20 plus 40 so that would be 70 multiplied by the voltage that i want to share that is 7. similarly for this one i want to find out the share of 20 ohms in comparison to the rest of the circuit how hungry it is how energy uh, uh, dependent it is so 20 divided by 70 so 20 divided by the rest of the circuit or the rest of the complete circuit and multiplied by what are they trying to share? They are trying to share the 7 volts that are available to them. Similarly, over here, 40. How much share would it want from the 7 volt that is going to be shared? So do we realize that this is a simple mathematical ratio? It's not even physics right now. It's simple mathematical ratio. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So you will again find out the answers to be 1 volts, uh, 2 volts, and 4 volts. And again, verify them at the end. You can add them together to find out that they are equal to the EMF of the battery. So again, the 7 volts has been shared between the three resistors and highest voltage going to the resistor of the highest value. So do we understand that for this technique, we did not have to find out the current in the first place. We did not have to summarize the question. Do we understand this idea? 
-hmm. Right. Yeah. So this is a, a technique that you can you could have used over here as well. You will still get the same answers. It doesn't matter. And again, don't be fooled by this idea that you're getting whole numbers. I am deliberately taking such values that are easy to calculate. Otherwise, the examiner can give you different answers. But every single time, my rechecking or my recheck point for a CD circuit would be that the voltage is supposed to add up at the end of the question. And of course, if there are decimal values for that question, it's possible that the voltage that you're getting from the battery is 10 volts. And since you're rounding off in middle of the steps, when you add the voltages of resistors at the end, it's possible that you get 10.1 or 9.9 .9 as your final answer. But it will still be considered correct because for rechecking purposes, we're just adding the voltages to see whether we get the same answer or not. Unless you take full fractions, unless you take full values, you will not be able to get the same value of EMF, right? So that is again mathematical dependency, not something, uh, there's, it's not something that's wrong with physics. Simple mathematical issue in those locations or in those questions at that point. So do we understand how to solve series combinations, series circuits? Do we understand the two rules of them? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Okay. Do we understand yeah. how to simplify mm -hmm. a series circuit and a parallel circuit? Do we understand that? Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do we that understand? That's just mostly basic math.